for a college football Saturday here in Baton Rouge at Tiger Stadium. And one more opportunity for Jaden Daniels to take the field here at Death Valley on senior day, leading the nation in every conceivable statistical category. Uh, the process has been nothing but a success here at Death Valley for Jaden Daniels. And interesting, talking last year to Brian Kelly, about midway through the season, Jaden Daniels either had no interceptions or one. And I remember saying to him, that's amazing, like so efficient with the football. And Brian Kelly at the time said, yeah, not necessarily a good thing. And of course, I'm thinking, not a good thing that he hasn't thrown interceptions. He said, no, yeah, he's not putting the ball in harm's way and taking necessary chances. This year, he has only four interceptions against 36 touchdowns. So what an amazing season he's had. Amazing season, and I'm sure Brian Kelly is very happy about that ratio. And he'll get the, field, the football to begin. A little muff on the kickoff as AM won the toss and deferred. So now Jaden Daniels takes the field, this last Heisman resume building opportunity. And let me tell you, people, he's got game breaking speed like he showed against Florida. He had the ball placement to put the ball where his receivers absolutely needed to be. The pocket presses to work right to left on the radio dial and get it to his third and fourth reads in his progression. This young man is a true triple threat. Running, throwing, and he'll beat you with his mind. And he'll throw on first down. And he's going to take a shot downfield into double coverage, hoping for Brian Thomas Jr. But uh, that was broken up. Mason Taylor across the 20 yard line picks up about six, makes it third down and four. LSU number two in America on third down. AM's defense number seven in America. Stopping teams on third down. And it looks like they've got Mason Taylor stopped here. Bryce Anderson with a terrific tackle to make it fourth down and one. Jay Bramblett. Anaya Smith lets it take a sideways hop. Out of bounds with a flag down. A couple of flags thrown. Kick catch interference on the kicking team, number 15. 15-yard 15 penalty, first down. Texas A&M. Now, they're going to start Jalen Henderson for the third time today, but that's because Connor Wigman, back at the end of September against Auburn, suffered a season-ending foot injury. Max Johnson with ribs. He got hurt against Old Miss, did the best he possibly could to try and work through that injury this week and have a chance to play against his old team. Of course, Max Johnson is an LSU transfer, but just not well enough to take the field. So Jalen Henderson, his third start of the season, and they always want to get the ball to Anaya Smith in space in as many creative ways as possible as Omar Spates was waiting for Anaya Smith on the edge. Great field position for Texas A&M as they begin their first possession in plus territory. Yeah, and when you're a guy like Jalen Henderson who hasn't really played a lot of football in three years, having that great field position and getting the ball to a guy like Anaya Smith who is a precise route runner but also great after the catch. Anderson on a keeper. Harold Perkins Jr. was waiting for him. Savion Jones there as well, a gain of a couple. So it will be third down and five. So right here on third down, they're going to try to get this football right here into the slot. He's out of the pocket with room to run. Looking for the line to gain and gets tripped up by Harold Perkins. Short. After a gain of only three, it'll be fourth and two for Texas A&M, but at the 40-yard line of LSU, they may go for it. Yeah, and you're going to see Jalen Henderson gets a, feels a little bit of pressure, but really just trying to get out of the pocket and feel a part of the game. Gets cut down right there by Harold Perkins Jr., the best player on LSU's defense. Harold Perkins injured on that last play. When he's running down Jalen Henderson here, when he goes for that foot, he lands like right on top of it. So he is not on the field for fourth down and two as AM goes for it. Dropping the football, the tight end, Max Wright. Should have been an easy fourth down pickup. The early chance taken. And now you give arguably the best quarterback in college football the ball near midfield. And Jaden Daniels on a keeper. Takes a hard hit and goes down after a gain of seven. So this AM defense is showing him early that they're different. 
Blitz off the edge, and it works to perfection. Bryce Anderson knifed in and brought down Josh Williams for no gain. Sets up third down and three. Jaden Daniels probably fine with that. Yeah, probably good. Third down and three. Only a three-man rush. Making a move and oh. stepping out of bounds backwards was Brian Thomas Jr. So they gave him the benefit of the doubt. Now forward progress may have been stopped at the 50-yard line had he been hit. But it looked like he went backwards on his own. And when you do that, if you step out of bounds, they probably should have marked the ball at the 49-yard line. Instead, LSU gets the benefit of the doubt. And the long throw from Daniels to Malik Neighbors. Stays on his feet. Tough to bring down. Malik Neighbors fights his way to the A&M 32-yard line to pick up 18. Daniels hands to Josh Williams. And the former walk-on dives ahead for about three inside the 30-yard line. Back in camp. Guys, we're all looking at each other saying, we can't possibly start a freshman at Mike Linebacker, can we? And after watching him play, they were like, we're going to start a freshman at Mike Linebacker because he's that good. Daniels, pocket collapsing. Avoids the set, tucks it under. The C's part. He's to the 15-yard line. Out of bounds inside the 10. First and goal. Logan Diggs breaks a tackle. Gets all the way down to about the one-yard line. Bryce Anderson saved the touchdown. To probably get some more highs in the stats, but he's not afraid to hand this ball off to his running back and let him do, do the work. Uh, he may have to do the work on third down. Torian York, Edger, and Cooper, who's also a veterinarian semifinalist, Combine on the stop of Diggs. Now it is third down and goal just outside the one. Now one route that Jaden Daniels has thrown extremely well this year is that box fade. It doesn't look like they're going to give him the opportunity to do that here with the stack alignment at the top of your screen. But they watch motion. that fade. They motion Brian Thomas. And instead on the dive up the middle, Logan Diggs is in for an LSU touchdown. We talked about it, Bob. Not afraid to hand the football off because at the end of the day, the most important thing today and every day when you play college football is winning the football game. He just wants to do whatever he has to do to allow the LSU Tigers to walk out of here with a win. And right there, he makes the perfect read. And boy, does it loom large as well. The drop on fourth down by the tight end, Max Wright, that gives LSU the short field at Tiger Stadium, you could barely hear the announcement when he came out on the field. Running under it, Ruben Owens. Good return out across the 25, gets to the edge, stiff arm out of bounds. Well, comparing Jaden Daniels to Joe Burrow, we weren't sure if you ever wanted to compare someone to Joe Burrow in terms of statistically putting up those types of numbers, but that's a pretty favorable comparison. Yeah, and what we saw from Joe Burrow in 2019, many thought would never be replicated, but he is certainly a first-round quarterback in my book. Jalen Henderson, backwards pass, is handled. Up the sideline goes Le'Veon Moss, and he picks up about three. To which I laughed and said, we well, probably won't want to listen to our broadcast considering Robert's up there. <laughs> the Heisman may come up today as Texas A&M will be about three yards short. But here, once again on third down, Jalen Henderson maybe uses his legs. Instead, Le'Veon Moss blasts up the middle for a first down as LSU continues to struggle to get stops on third down. Coming into today, 113th in FBS at stopping opponents on third down. And they didn't even told us we're going to try to run to the perimeter, but they ran that one right down the pipe. Anderson off play action, tries to drop one in on the sideline to Anaya Smith, but air mails him out of bounds. Underneath route, spinning for a first down is Anaya Smith. The only 2,000-yard receiver in SEC history to also have 250 or more yards as a punt returner, as a kick returner. Anaya Smith, all different ways he can hurt you as Henderson tries to hurt LSU with his legs here, and he picks up five. Harold Perkins there to bump him out. But that would be his sixth or seventh year in college football. What is going on? Bouncing off tacklers and not finding any room, Amari Daniels. 
He had that opportunity last year. A lot of guys saying you should go. He was recovering from an injury, so that's why he decided to come back. But at the moment, it's about right now. Third down and four. You have to think that's where Jalen Henderson will go. Instead, it's Jake Johnson, the tight end, to the 30-yard line. Very close to the line to gain. Omar Spates knocked him out of bounds. Let's see what they do handing the ball off to the running backs here. For the second time here in the first quarter, they go for it on fourth down. That extra push might have been just enough for Moss. And it is a fresh set of downs for Texas A&M. They need it about a foot, and they got about a foot plus six inches. He ain't 320. That man is about 360 pounds. Play action, 10th play of the drive. Henderson slides and takes a hit. Whit Weeks came over and brought him down as he gave himself up at the 27-yard line. Quarterback draw. Going nowhere. Henderson brought down behind the line as Braden Swinson came through and made first contact for LSU. A loss of five. That'll make it third down and 12. Well, you know how you stop the quarterback draw? You get penetration into the backfield. Then right there, Braden Swinson ran through his guy to get to the other guy. Anderson over the middle in the soft spot right at the first down line to gain is an ISM. And that's good enough for a first down. Picked up 13. And Henderson was Johnny on the spot. Henderson, the fake fooled no one. And he is buried for a loss five, at least six back close to the 25 yard line. Ovi Agufo was there. Ovi Agufo just let Jalen Henderson know you ain't at Fresno State no more, buddy. 14th play of the drive, but it's second and long. Henderson out of the pocket. And that got back four yards to the 20 yard line. As Anaya Smith makes another catch. So now it'll be third down and 11 right on the edge of the red zone. And it looks like that will take us to the end of the first quarter. So it'll be third down and long for Texas A&M to begin quarter number two. As LSU has the 7 nothing lead. Twice on fourth down. Got a fourth down conversion to keep this drive alive. And now third and 11 to start the second quarter. There's the check down underneath. Room to run. Inside the five-yard line, down to the four, goes David Bailey. And David Bailey Jr. stays in the game. Takes the handoff. Cut down inside the two. Andre Sam made the stop. Second down and goal. Well, if you want to prevent LSU from winning the Heisman today, this is certainly the way to do it. Eat the clock, keep them on the sideline, and now here in a goal-to-goal -goal situation, punch it in for seven when they've been sitting on the sideline for what feels like an eternity. Moss walks into the end zone for an AM touchdown. Levy on Moss untouched. Play touchdown drive to tie it at seven as Le'Veon Moss has his fifth on the ground this season. And the most on a scoring drive since 2009. The deadlock. This matchup with LSU at seven. And speaking of Elijah Robinson. Back to the offense LSU. Stuffed up the middle is Noah Kane. I remember meeting with Elijah Robinson as a player at Penn State in production meetings. No, nope. <laughs> you're going to come here and be a grad assistant, and that's how it all started. Coaches, no coaches. And if you met Elijah Robinson when he was a player, I mean, he, he's where he belongs, and that is influencing the lives of young men. The AM defense shows blitz on third down and nine. 
right, here they come. Jaden Daniels under pressure, in trouble, and wrestled down. Jacoby Matthews, Edger, and Cooper got through to share the sack. And got a sandwich there on Jaden Daniels. Anaya Smith, fair catch. That is all 35 yard line. But I'll wait. I'll let you guys keep pondering that. You'll get it. Anderson on a rollout to the sideline. Incomplete. Hoping for Smith. Harold Perkins again running in coverage. And if they want to get their offense back on the field, it's the defense that's going to actually have to step up this time. Ruben Owens. First down. He picks up 12. His natural talent is what's gotten him on the field. They keep it on the ground with the freshman. And Ruben Owens has about a yard and a half. Second down and eight near midfield. Jalen Henderson gives it up, making tacklers misses Ruben Owens. And he's across the 50-yard line, three yards shy of the first down. They have to find ways to keep him on the field, and that's exactly what they're doing. Third down and three, four-man rush. Another first down hookup. Moose Muhammad. This guy catches damn near everything. And we talk about big games from last week, but Moose Muhammad had his breakout game of the year, going for 104 yards and a touchdown. So they're getting all of their weapons involved right now. Tackle for loss this time by Braden Swinson as he brought down Ruben Owens behind the line for a loss of three. He could actually start get going. Nice job there by Braden Swinson. A little button hook down to about the 30-yard line to Noah Thomas. Again, Evan Stewart out of today's game. So he is that wide receiver that could take the top off of the defense. You know, I don't really love playing like this, but they will today because that's their best way to win. Ruben Owens, a gain of only a yard. Makes it fourth down and four. So if they can get three points here, he'll take it. Bond from 48. Plenty of distance. And he's got it. As Johnny Manziel put up Heisman winning numbers on and off the field. As this kickoff looks like it will hook out of bounds for a penalty. So that'll bring it out to the 35 yard line. And again, single season SEC history numbers. Of course, in 2012, Johnny Manziel took home the Heisman Trophy. Will Jaden Daniels do the same this year for LSU? I mean, how fun was it to watch Johnny Manziel go out there and tear up the SEC, doing what he does best. Terrific job, complimentary football being done by a and though. Daniels over the middle, charring the ball free from Kyron Lacey to create an incompletion with Lacey. Shaken up was Deuce Harmon. Kyron Lacey couldn't hold on after the contact. Yeah, you're going to see. Jay Daniels just going through his read, number one's there, puts it on him. Kyron Lacey, I mean, Deuce Harmon did a really nice job of not knocking that one out. Texas A&M brings an edge blitz. Jaden Daniels up the middle. He's got a first down. And he grinds out a few extra yards, gets tossed out of bounds. That'll tack on 15 more. Damani Richardson costs his team. Oh. 28 yards in all, the run plus the 15-yard personal foul. LSU only had 63 yards of total offense before that play. Play action for Daniels. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. Laying out, unable to haul it in was Malik Neighbors. Flag down in the offensive backfield. Holding on the offense, number 70. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. You're going to see number 70 to the right of your screen, Miles Frazier. Right here. Little hands to the face, but now right there when he gets extended, you certainly can't do that, Miles Frazier. And then you see Malik Neighbors diving for that one. And unfortunately, looks like Malik is a little banged up. He made it all the way back to the line of scrimmage and then went down on one knee. Well, Matt, we've got a close one here after the injury timeout. Spinning out of trouble is Jaden Daniels. Still on his feet down inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. A scramble of 23 for Daniels. 
And this is what Jaden Daniels can do that really no other top-level quarterback in the country is doing. And when everyone else around him seems to be struggling just a little bit, whether it's catching the ball here, protection there, running the football, he's doing a really nice job of taking matters into his own hands and keeping his team on the field. And there goes Malik Neighbors back in the game after a one-play injury timeout. Daniels goes his way, and Neighbors spins, breaks a tackle with a stiff arm. He's got a first down. Number one in America in receiving yards per game. Averaging close to 130 yards per contest. And this is why. Watch the beautiful route. Catches it outside his frame. And then it's the run after the catch. Sweet feet. And this man eats every single time he gets the football. Now they will stack neighbors and Thomas. More of a bunch set with Mason Taylor, the tight end. Screen out to Thomas. Makes a man miss inside the 10. Down inside the eight yard line before he's run out by Matthews and Cooper. Quarterback draw. Jaden Daniels bounces down to about the six yard line. Yeah, a couple of those throws by Jaden. He overcorrected on one. He underthrew the first deep ball, overthrew the next deep ball. He's got to dial that in so they can hit some of those big explosive plays down the field. Now he wants timeout on third down. He saw the play clock winding down. After the LSU timeout, third down inside the seven yard line. Daniels on a roll now. Front right pylon, touchdown Malik Neighbors. Wide open. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy right there for this LSU offense. down this season for Malik Neighbors. You're going to see right here with Brian Thomas Jr. He's going to push vertical and get in the way. Neighbors is going to pump forward and run a flat route. The little five yard out route as Jaden Daniels is sprinting that way towards him. Easy. Hey, and like a good neighbor, Malik is always there for his quarterback. As we get a look from our progressive pylon cam. He continues to build the Heisman resume. Route. Correct. As long as, in their judgment, you're not seeking out contact to try and create a pick. And I think Brian Thomas Jr. did it right as Ruben Owens gets brought down at the 22-yard line. Oh, man, Bob. Your cameo there is cheese is pretty good. <laughs> a little flip forward on the jet sweep. Not much running room. Renaya Smith, Savion Jones, Andre Sam were waiting for him as he may have picked up a yard. That means they got to get all that air out of their defense and close the space on this offense as many times as possible. Anderson out of the pocket. And he runs out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. Savion Jones chased him out. So now it will be third down and nine as you can feel a little energy from this LSU defense now that the offense has given them the lead back. The offense has always been the spark for this LSU team. And when you hear me talk about too much air in the defense, that means they've been soft at the line of scrimmage. They've been getting pushed back by the offensive line. The DBs are playing too far off and they're not attacking on the defensive side. Well, on this possession, they have been attacking and that defensive line is owning the LOS. Three-man rush. Anderson under pressure. Low throw, scooped up, Noah Thomas, he's got a first down in coverage. Yeah, and you see Jalen Henderson hold his eyes down the middle and then get it outside. And just a nice job there by Noah Thomas going down to make that catch. It wasn't the best throw. And if you're saved Ryan, you have to be tighter in coverage. We just talked about the air in the defense. Henderson runs into the pressure and now runs away from it. Gets tripped up. What a terrific play by Ovi Agufa. Just when it looked like Henderson may have escaped, he brings him down for a six-yard sack. 
Never give up, pass rushers. When you're in this moment and the quarterback goes to your side, just keep chasing him down. Get a toe, get a shoelace, get something. And Obi Ogufo is out there making it rain. Nice hustle. I love it when you see the big fellas get rewarded for going out and playing their hardest. Blitz, a flip right over the top of it. And Le'Veon Moss out across the 35-yard line. For number zero, Anaya Smith. Look for them to try to get him involved here. Anderson, wide up and down the sideline. Easy pitch and catch first down. But if they win the ACC championship and take plays well, I think that FSU is in even without Jordan Travis. That's on the drop by Jenny Walker. After starting one for three and 120 yards, he's, he's getting more and more confidence as the game goes on. Extends the play here. Oh, big hit delivered on Noah Thomas by Sage Ryan. And a flag comes out. Personal foul targeting on the defense number 15. That previous play is under further review. This is him coming off of the guy that he was guarding to hit Noah Thomas. Uses the shoulder, hits him in the shoulder. And Noah Thomas was actually able to get a foot down and get his eyes to Sage Ryan. So it is a very hard hit, but it doesn't look like it's targeting based off of the rules of targeting in college football. You're correct. That is not targeting. Maybe if an official has a bad angle, right. he'll throw the flag, which is exactly why they go through the process they're going through now. Because right. targeting has to be reviewed from the booth and confirmed. And that yeah. little head wobble of After Noah review, Thomas. there is no foul for targeting. Number 15 will stay in the game. I'm glad they got it right. We want to see these guys play football. And hitting somebody hard is not a problem. Another third down now for Texas A&M. The catch made one-handed. And out of bounds, Le'Veon Moss very close to the first down. Tobiano made the stop. He is a half-yard shy. Let's see if Elijah Robinson goes for it again on fourth down. It looks like he will. He said to get some big bodies to try and keep the drive alive with a minute 31 to go in the half. Yeah, I think in this situation, you're looking at fourth and barely one. You got to trust the big bodies up, up front to get this first down, especially when your defense just gave up a touchdown to Jane Daniels and that offense. You want to keep them on the sideline. They run it with Moss. Extra effort. He's got it. So inside of the last two minutes. Control the football. It is not lost on me that Elijah Robinson is a defensive line coach. He wants his D-line well rested as well. Tipped ball at the line. On the carrot. It looks like it might have been scooped up. And it was. Just because the ball gets tipped doesn't mean you can't catch it. And they'll run it up the middle for a gain of a couple to make it third down and two once again. Let's see if maybe Texas A&M thinks about using one of their timeouts as Mason Smith made the stop on Amari Daniels. Third down and about two and a half coming here for Texas A&M. A lot of time is coming off the clock. Texas A&M has all three timeouts. Yes. Not using one here. Spinning out is Henderson. Underneath, Jake Johnson. At the pylon, he's in, it looks like. For a touchdown for Texas A&M. Who needs a timeout? A&M <laughs> didn't take the timeout because they wanted to restrict the amount of time that LSU would potentially have if they got the football back right after halftime. How about their two touchdown drives? 17 plays and 13 plays. And a flag thrown, pushing and shoving after the point after attempt. Oh, it's getting chippy out there. During the play, personal foul, leverage number zero on the defense. That penalty will be extended to the kickoff. The try is good. Of course, is one of the two sons of Brad Johnson, the former Super Bowl winner for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. On uh, this A&M team, his brother Max played here at LSU as a quarterback. And 
He actually had the game back against Auburn in 55 games. More than Johnny Morris, the Bears' whole time franchise leader. Wow. And that will take us to halftime here at Death Valley with LSU down by three. And Texas A&M will start the third quarter with the football. To start the second half, and they've got a three-point lead. Bob Wachusen here with Robert Griffin III and Chris Button as well. Ball control, the story of the first half for the Texas A&M offense. And they'll have it at their own 25-yard line to begin the third quarter. Only having 10 minutes, they have officially put the Heisman on notice when it comes to Jaden Daniels and what they want to accomplish today. Broken tackle by Walker. And it looks like he's got a first down when your offense isn't on the field. And the two touchdown drives for Texas A&M were long ones. And they start off ball control to begin the second half as well. Another catch for Noah Thomas. Points. Well, you have to start challenging these receivers at the line of scrimmage so that they don't get these easy five-yard hitches that turn into 15-yard gains. Offside, activated the quarterback, number zero on the defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. So five yards called on the offside jump by Mason Smith on the ESPN app as well. A little option run. And Jalen Henderson, he's got, I think, a first down. Greg Penn made the stop, but... Looked like he picked up the five he needed for a fresh set of downs for Texas A&M. And right now, offensive coordinator Bobby Petrino is throwing the kitchen sink at this LSU defense. We've seen everything from pro-style approach to the wing back set to the pistol to under center with the fullback in the backfield. He is keeping them on their toes and showing them all the different elements of what this A&M offense can be. Play action. Henderson on the move. He's going to heave a jump ball down the sideline. Terrific adjustment to the football by John A. Walker, who's got another big play for AM down to the 10-yard line. And you can just see it. Hey, here's the play action. Oh my goodness. Do you see Sage Ryan coming off the edge? My roommate's gotta be down there somewhere. And he throws it to John Day Walker, who makes the adjustment, which is why receivers play wide receiver and DBs play DB. Major Burns with that neck roll on. Amazing job by Jalen Henderson, giving his receiver a chance down the field. They run it with Moss. Cuts it back to the five that stood up there. He's giving more and more liberty to Jalen Henderson to continue to open up and spread out this offense, and it's a thing of beauty. On the ground, again, backing his way down to the one-yard line is Moss. Oh, no, they're going with the triple back set. Full house backfield. Ready on Moss. Here's the eye back. set on Monday Night Football with the guy by the name of Marcus Spears, and this is certainly a big man bowling type of moment. Mark Naboo, go on with your bad self. We see you, Boo Boo. Did they just give it to a man named Naboo and he just snuck it in the end zone? They sure did. They should change the name of that play in their playbook to let's run, we see you, Boo Boo. From the one-yard line, from now on. <laughs> the big pass from Jalen Henderson to John A. Walker to set up this goal line type of situation. 14 points on the board since we last saw Jaden Daniels and the LSU offense on the field. Caleb Jackson on the kickoff return. Out across the 25. They can put up a good showing and impress the committee as Jaden Daniels goes to work to begin the second half here. Spinning for a first down is Brian Thomas Jr. He picks up 14 yards. But again, it would be, in a way, a travesty if Florida State goes undefeated, loses their quarterback, and doesn't get a chance at the playoff. I agree with you 100%. And now with LSU, great way to get this drive started, hitting Brian Thomas Jr. Miscommunication, Daniels behind neighbors on first down. But in college, the committee does take into account injuries, and, and they they're, know that Jordan Travis is one of the best quarterbacks we, we have in this game right now. Josh Williams 
about four yards short of a first down. Edger and Cooper makes the stop. I mean, that just tells you how great they have played today in this atmosphere in Death Valley and really bottled up Jaden Daniels so far. A drop for neighbors. And now it's fourth down and four near midfield. Down by two scores. Jaden Daniels hasn't come to the sideline yet. According to our analytics, even at this spot on the field, if you've got the number one offense in America, they would agree with a go for it decision. Yes, you have to go for it. And the guy that just dropped that pass might be the one that they come right back to. Malik Neighbors has been featured in these types of moments time and time again. Mason Taylor was in motion. Daniels out of the pocket. He's going to run for it and get it and then some. Daniels down the sideline. Finally wrestled out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Situation for LSU after a 49-yard run. Talked about that game-breaking speed that he has. And when he sees green grass, that man is moving. Almost found his way all the way to the end zone. His legs have been his greatest asset today. And he's tired of Mark Naboo having more, the same amount of touchdowns as him so far in this game. Daniels keeps it and dives right back to the line of scrimmage. The fake didn't fool the coverage. Albert Regis made the tackle for Texas A&M. So now will the Aggies possibly bend but not break? Can they get a red zone goal to go stop and hold LSU to three? Or is this four down territory at this point for LSU? We're about to find out. Yeah, if it's going to be a big stop, it's going to start up front with that defensive line. How crazy is that, that a left guard has the same amount of touchdowns as Jaden Daniels in this game right now? Daniels, again, quarterback run. Spins down to the one-yard line. Gets a push, and that's where the play is blown dead. All tight ends on the field. Four of them for LSU. Third and goal at the one. Zone read, up the middle into the end zone, Josh Williams, touchdown, flag down at the line of scrimmage. Offside, on the defense, that penalty is the climb, the result of the play is a touchdown. LSU with the answer. They have to win this game. And Jay Daniels knows that handing the football off was the best decision in that moment. Oregon with a statement against Oregon State. Bo Nix with a statement in the Heisman race as well. Yes. What kind of a statement yes. will Michael Penix make in the Apple Cup game? But of course, as Ruben Owens brings this kick back, those two have a chance to meet once again oh. in the Pac-12 title game as Owens tumbles out across the 35-yard line. We check in with Matt Barry. And see how he's doing. Was not able to put much weight on his injured leg at all. Back to the offense. Texas A&M. Amari Daniels picks up about three. And Chris Button, we're just talking about Elijah Robinson and the impact he's had on this A&M program. Yeah, you see these guys playing with a lot more joy than they have all season. It's one of the things that Robinson's instilled in these guys. You know, when he played at Penn State, he was injured. And when they were diagnosing the injury, they found an issue with his spine. It forced him to retire from football. He said, I was the guy with all my eggs in one basket. I was going to the NFL. I was going to take care of my family. But then it taught me the importance of getting a degree, treating people right. Right, and that you realize this game can be taken away in an instant, so enjoy it. Four yards for Ernest Groundover. And we'll talk a little bit more of how he's utilized music to get his guys invigorated and play with passion. Third down and three. Stepping up, Henderson. He's got another third down conversion. Better than really anybody <laughs> today so far. A rollout for Henderson. Looking back to the sideline. It's not there. He'll tuck it under again. Cuts it upfield. And he's got seven more yards before Paris Shan brings him down. I mean, holy smokes, guys. Turning the corner. Maybe on Moss. He's got another Texas A&M first down. Major Burns made the stop. 11 more yards for the ground attack for Texas A&M. And that's allowing them to work on the clock as well as this will take them over 27 minutes time of possession so far 
Only about 13 and a half minutes for LSU. And coming into this game, they knew that they had a, a phenomenal defense that was athletic and that could, could keep LSU off balance. But their best defense was going to be their offense staying on the field, and that is exactly what they've done. A drop that time for Walker. So it will be second down and 10 at the LSU 32. To get his team locked in in those times in practice, and it seems to be paying off. Out on the edge, Ruben Owens, tracked down by Whit Weeks. LSU shows an all-out blitz. Short of the first down, the catch is made. Squeezed into a tight window to Walker, and now it's fourth down and two or so. Another decision to be made for Elijah Robinson. Looks like fourth down and a long one close to two. And he will go for it. And I think this again is the right call. They control the line of scrimmage. I'm sure ESPN Analytics probably says it's the right call as well. They're controlling the line. They've got that fullback once again in that eye formation. Let's see what they do off of it this time. They'll give it to Moss. He's got it. And then some. All the way down inside the 15 to about the 12-yard line. And they're doing it at an extremely high level. Now it's David Bailey Jr.'s turn. And that's the 10th play of this drive. So RG3, it is another double-digit play drive for Texas A&M. And that keeps the LSU offense sitting and watching. Yeah, and not just the fact that LSU's offense is sitting on the sideline and watching, but this defense, it's not even the fourth quarter yet. And the LSU this year has not necessarily been known to have the best defense. So how tired are they going to be come the last two, three minutes of the fourth quarter if they've been on the field the entire game? Anderson, stutter steps, and throws it away. They have to finish this possession with a kick, whether it's a touchdown and an extra point or kicking a field goal. So for Henderson, he's got to be really protective of the football here and not give this LSU defense a chance to create a spark. Walker, Smith, and Thomas out to the right. Quarterback draw. Henderson dropped down. Harold Perkins didn't buy the fake. A loss of a yard. It's a red zone defensive stop for LSU. Yeah, and Harold Perkins snipped this one out right from the beginning. Actually ducked underneath an offensive lineman. Breathing some life into this defense that just been, but didn't break that time. Randy Bonds from 32. No good. He pushed it right. And you didn't give him the announcer jinx either. Good job holding on to that you. one. I'd like credit for that. That is a post <laughs> announcer jinx. So Jaden Daniels starts it on the ground, and nothing there for Noah Kane. Edger and Cooper, number one in the SEC in tackles for loss. That's Neighbors in motion. Second and ten for Daniels with a pump fake. Steps up, and he escapes somehow to keep the play alive. It took the third and fourth rusher to finally get there to bring him down, and Bryce Anderson on a nickel blitz helped out Edger and Cooper for what ultimately is a one-yard sack that may take us to the end of the third quarter. We'll see. LSU's going to line up, although Daniels goes down on one knee, hopefully just to adjust his cleats. He's okay, but down to the final five seconds of the quarter. And that will take us to the end of the third. So it'll be third and long to start off the fourth quarter for LSU in a three-point game. As Jaden Daniels fought the good fight, but eventually was dropped for a sack after the third quarter. Well, a and 9 for 15 on third down. LSU 4 for 7. Third down and long, though, to open up the fourth quarter. Here comes a blitz. Daniels backpedals. Extends the play with a stiff arm. Throws one across his body. Complete. Try to find neighbors in those crucial situations so that he can't get out and use his legs. Anaya Smith doesn't call for a fair catch and gets spun down. And a little something extra after the play is over. Right there, Edger and Cooper sniffing him out on that play was huge to get them off the field. 
Low snap, and a cutback run for Daniels for a couple. Jordan Jefferson, Jacoby and Guillory. Wow. Just wondering how many screens you probably have to have going today if you're a true college football fan. <laughs> Anaya Smith coming up big for the first time in a while, breaking tackles close to midfield before he's finally brought down. Throwing it to the wide open guy, throwing into the pressure, which is what you're always taught as a quarterback, even in high school. A little delay for Henderson, and he throws it away. He talked about how his teammates love him and the wide receivers all play hard for him because they want to see him have success. Four yards for Amari Daniels. That just couldn't make it. So here's Jalen Henderson looking for another third down conversion. And he throws an interception. Greg Penn able to haul it in. And the first takeaway for the LSU defense sets the Bayou Bengals up with great field position. We want to talk about a defense that's able. Watch Greg pin the third right here. He's going to flow with the guy running the shallow route and then fall off and right into an interception where Jalen Henderson tries to throw it over the top of him. Watch. He works out. Oh, here comes the shallow. No, 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 no. I'm going to fall off and catch this interception. Amazing job there by Greg Penn. To learn more, that student section was rocking after the Greg Penn interception. Ryan Thomas... Junior stays in bounds, scoots up the sideline for an LSU first down. How about that LSU defense finally giving the offense a spark here in this game? Play action for Jaden Daniels. Over the middle, wide open Chris Hilton, his first catch inside the 25-yard line before he's brought down. I've never had to duck before, get Bob. Oh, get after it. Um. Yeah, beautiful. Very, very good. Delicious. Jaden Daniels looking for the end zone. Touchdown. Brian Thomas Jr. does it again from 23. Well, you saw the Heisman at halftime that we just showed you. And Jaden Daniels is going to have to have a Heisman type finish. But that certainly was a Heisman type throw and catch between him and Brian Thomas Jr. Amazing job there. Getting the ball out to one of the best receivers in the country. Leading the nation in touchdown catches. And LSU is back on top. That's the 15th for Brian Thomas Jr. He is number one in receiving touchdowns. Malik Neighbors is number one in America in receiving yards. Sounds like you're continuing to enjoy your two Duncan. I'm trying. 28-24, LSU. In a crucial point, and now has sparked this LSU team and this crowd here in Death Valley to get back into this thing. His response here on this next drive will tell a lot. Anaya Smith on the run back. Out of bounds at the 18-yard line the same recipe they don't have to change anything continue to run the ball take the easy completions and allow Henderson to get back in rhythm Henderson on a rollout and he's going to take a sack runs out of bounds for a three-yard loss he was bumped out right on the sideline pursued by Greg Penn Texas A&M's team wanted a flag throw nothing comes out so it will be second down and long yeah, if you're Jalen Henderson in that situation, you got to throw the football away. You don't want to take that two-yard loss, which then goes back on your offensive line as a sack. And then for LSU, I mean, they've lost 17 straight games when trailing by 10-plus. Just like they were today, and right now they got a four-point lead. Henderson, again, running to the same sideline. This time he stays in bounds. And picks up about four. It'll still be third down and long, though, as Mason Smith made the stop. Let's see where they mark him out. Still shy of the 20-yard line. So only a gain of about three to make it third down and nine. And that was a gain of three because of number zero right there in the middle of the screen, Mason Smith. All 6'6", 315 pounds of him hustling down the field and putting that hit on Henderson right as he was going out of bounds. So now, here, third and long, the guy that he's really been like hitting is John A. Walker in these situations. Trying to keep his eyes downfield. Tough to do when the pocket comes apart, as it just did. Harold Perkins. 
Hawkins heads on the sack. That you've mentioned that ended up getting that sack into the moment. Low snap. And a line drive kick, returnable potentially for Clayton. Makes the first man miss. Gets to the 45. Almost broke it. Still great field position for LSU. LSU trying to build Matt on their recent lead over Texas A&M. Scene shot. Neighbors. It takes three Aggies to surround him. That's your quarterback and your wide receiver being on the same page. Downhill run. Josh Williams fights his way for about a yard. Daniels, by the way, now up to 154 yards passing with two touchdowns to go along with 110 yards rushing. So he's got over 360 yards of total offense, rather 260 yards, pardon me, of total offense. Still well shy of the 417 he normally puts up. A rollout. Avoids a sack. Throws it away. Got outside the pocket. LSU trying to build on their lead. Blitz coming. Jaden Daniels. Misses neighbors. He was wide open. Did not even see a flag on the field, but there was one thrown on the far side for defensive holding. And they called that defensive holding on Damani Richardson. So even though Jaden Daniels and neighbors were not able to link up, they get a fresh set of downs, courtesy of the defense. So a third down conversion via penalty. Another blitz. One on one for neighbors. He's got it. Touchdown. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wait till you see this one. Malik Neighbors and Jaden Daniels. We're going to see if he was in here, but it looked like he was to me. Here's the catch. There's the foot. In college football, you only need one. Looks like he controls it all the way to the ground. It's actually on the field. Earlier in the game, watching these guys warm up. And look at that. Catch. Foot in. Controls it all the way to the ground. Does he? The question is, is the movement as it goes to the ground enough to say he didn't have control anymore? To me. Woo, that's close now. That to me, the on cam look didn't reveal much. The fact that they called this a touchdown on the field is what leads me to believe that it will remain the same unless they believe that right there shows that it came out enough we could slow that down a little bit there at the end just so the viewer can fully see the foot is clearly in clearly has possession of the football at that point but now it's once he hits the ground yeah, he's clearly in bounds the only issue here is control Correct. I mean, look at that. Just the acrobaticness of that catch. Let's see what replay says. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. And RT3, as you said perfectly, when you set that precedent on the field of touchdown, you have to see with indisputable video evidence that they were wrong. And I don't know that any look that we got showed that he lost control of the ball completely. Exactly. You talked about how they just threw the touchdown to Brian Thomas Jr. And Malik Neighbors came back and said, hey, man, remember those commercials back in the day with Mia Hamm and Michael Jordan? Anything you can do, I can do better. Unbelievable catch. Can't wait to draw that one up for you guys here after the extra point. So as we let this bad boy roll, watch what Jaden Daniels does. Holds his eyes down the middle, then gets him there immediately with that rocker step. Finds the Wi-Fi connection, and like we said earlier in the game, like a good neighbor, Malik is always there. What a catch, man. Once again, just watch, just poetry in motion there. Best quarterback in the country. 
most dynamic quarterback in the country and the best receiver in the country. Getting a ride from his big offensive lineman, Charles Turner the third. A knuckleball kick. Short hops down to Tees. I think that's a face mask. Oh my goodness. Personal foul face mask on the kicking team number five. 15 yard added to the end of the run. Would that be enough to push him over the top? Knowing that Michael Penix still has two more opportunities to impress the voters and Bo Nix did a good job last night as well. As they set up the tight end screen, Max Wright rumbles out near midfield with a gain of about nine. What do you think? Bob, I strongly felt coming into this game, all Jaden Daniels needed to do was win the football game. We got a guy down on the field right now. That's the touchdown score, Mark Naboo. Man. The big left guard who on the Offensive lineman dive, got the last score for Texas A&M. It's been 21 unanswered points for LSU. LSU is the only FBS team in the top 10 in America in rushing and receiving yards. Avoiding a hit is Henderson. Flips one out of the left flat. Looking to get loose was Anaya Smith. And it looks as if he steps out of bounds near midfield. That's enough for a first down if the play stands. Illegal player downfield. So that will come back, a five-yard penalty called against Texas A&M. Seven minutes left in this game. You're down by two scores. You got to trust the young man to get you back into it. Four-man rush off the wrong foot. A terrific throw by Jalen Henderson and breaking free. All the way down to the goal line is right as he in. Touchdown. Now that's how you make up for dropping that ball fourth down earlier in the game. Just went out here on a simple out route off of a chip. Breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, and he's still rumbling and stumbling to the end zone. And here is the progressive pylon cam of that glorious run into the end zone by Max Wright. We got ourselves a game, Bob. Anderson with Ruben Owens to his right. Anderson heading left. Lobs a jump ball in the end zone. Incomplete. Trying to get it to John A. Walker. A touchback here. It'll come out to the 25 for LSU, protecting a five point lead. Let's go back to Matt. Jaden Daniels back to work here on a rollout. Finds the soft spot. Catch and run again from Malik Neighbors. Down the sideline. Stays in bounds. Malik Neighbors with a flag down. It's a potential touchdown. Unless he stepped out, we'll have to check the marker. They're going to call a block in the back holding on Kyron Lacey on the sideline. It's what sprung Malik Neighbors down that sideline. Amazing catch and run, by the way. Holy cow. Holding on the offense, number two. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first down. But that comes back, still a big gain there by Malik Neighbors. He still netted them 35 yards, even with the penalty. Logan Diggs. A gain of four and a half. After the LSU timeout, second down and six. That's Lacey in motion. Blitz. Jaden Daniels out of the pocket. No one down the right sideline to stop him. If he gets a step, and he stumbles out of bounds. But when you do those cage rushes, when he tries to break that initial line of scrimmage, you have to get hands on him. Might be a free play. They'll take a shot. Brian Thomas Jr. broken up at the goal line. Bruce yeah. Harmon was there in coverage. Offside on the defense, number five. Five-yard penalty. First down.
first and five just outside the red zone. And a gain of only a yard on first down for Caleb Jackson, the freshman. Another tackle for Edgerton Cooper. Man, this Texas A&M defensive front seven has been impressive all day when it comes to shutting down the running game from the running backs. They've had some struggles allowing Jaden Daniels to get outside the pocket and create the magic that we know that he does, but they've done a really nice job responding today to after some of those big plays, resettling themselves and getting back to owning the line of scrimmage. Daniels with a pump fit. He's going to trap in the back right corner of the end zone, laying out. And just missing again was Brian Thomas Jr. Big play here. Third down and four with just over five minutes to go. They'll run it right up the middle. Logan Diggs. It looks like he's got it by a half yard. And that will allow LSU to continue to grind the clock down as well. Absolutely. To go. Absolutely love that play call by offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock. Everyone in the stadium is paying attention to Malik Neighbors. You run them on a nice little sugar motion or motion return to get the defense thinking he's going to get it, and then you smack him in the face with a downhill run. Beautiful job. consecutive touchdowns for LSU. I said it before, he's been trying to let everyone know all year, hey, don't forget about me. Two of his last four games, he's had a 100 yards receiving, and I don't know what's going on, but he was really emotional after that touchdown, and whatever he's going through, we want him to know that we're all praying for him. Flag down on the Anaya Smith kickoff return. the return holding by the return team number 43 10 yard penalty first down there's Texas A&M needs more clock worst starting field position down by two scores tunnel screen to Moose Muhammad and he picks up about four yards now A&M has all three timeouts but they need to score quickly and they need to at least have some time on the clock to try an onside kick as Kyron Lacey, he's still feeling the emotion on the LSU sideline. Yeah, like I said, there's something going on there. He's a senior, maybe it's his last opportunity to play here, or there's something going on in his personal life, but the quarterback is right there consoling him. His teammates love him, and you can see the emotion pouring out. Tipped ball, incomplete. A miss for Max Wright and Jalen Henderson. So now it will be third down and six with three and a half minutes to go. And as you said, Bob, they, they certainly do need to score fast. But in order to score, they got to get this first down. Third and six, you would honestly think that this is four down territory anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to maybe sneak in a run here. But if they're going to throw it, it all starts with this man right here in the slot. Oh, we'll get back to that look in a second. But it's Anaya Smith there in the slot. Anderson. Tripped up short of the first down line again. Good open field tackle by Harold Perkins. So they have to go for it. Down by two scores with three minutes and 15 seconds to go or so. And the clock rolling. So not only must they go for it, but 
They need two scores, and a lot of time is winding off the clock here. Oh, yeah, and they sacrificed Harold Perkins Jr.'s ability to rush the passer to make him be the quarterback spy today, and he's been really, really effective at that for the entirety of this game. Look for him right here on this play. Three-man rush, a lob to the sideline, way over the head of Noah Thomas, sent incomplete. So a turnover on downs. I mean, the guy's got 40 touchdowns passing. His stats are more than equipped to be a Heisman Trophy winner. Now run it with Noah Kane. And here's the thing, for, for me in this game, early on, Jaden could have been extremely selfish, tried to audible plays, call plays for himself to get those touchdowns because everyone's trying to finish the year strong. He didn't do that. His main focus today was winning the football game, going up against the number one total defense in the SEC. Second on third downs, first against the run, second against the pass, and all he did was come out here and throw four touchdown passes and lead his team to victory. If that's not a statement game, I don't know what is. Kane again. And I think he's got a first down. If Texas A&M is not going to use their timeouts, LSU could go to victory formation. At this point, they could simply take a knee. And Jaden Daniels is going to celebrate what he knows will be a season-capping win. Nine and three will be LSU as they'll be looking for another 10 win season in whichever bowl game they have the opportunity to play in. And Jaden Daniels, at the very least, will have four more touchdowns accounted for as Noah Kane spins down to the five yard line, and that will take us under a minute to go. Jaden Daniels is the most electrifying college football player in the country. He's the most dynamic, and he's the biggest cheat code in all of college football. If you're asking me, after today, going up against the best defense they've faced all season long, LSU just won its third Heisman Trophy. And with Texas A&M not calling their timeouts, Brian Kelly, Tells Jaden Daniels, victory formation for LSU in his final game here in Death Valley on Senior Day. Will this one last exclamation point be enough when it comes time for the Heisman voters to make their decision? I'm standing next to one. I know you're undecided, but that's a pretty good way to end the season if you're Jake Davis. Oh, it's a huge way to end the season. A great comeback. Coming into this game, Jaden Daniels had more explosive plays than 84 FBS schools. Not players. Schools by himself. And now when you look at what he was able to pull off today, it wasn't always easy. But when it got going, it got going in a hurry. Touchdown pass on the fade to Brian Thomas Jr. Here's another back shoulder to Malik Neighbors with the one foot in. And then he comes back and he hits one to his main man, Kyron Lacey. All day long, Jaden Daniels was finding the Wi-Fi connection and airdropping beauties. Jaden, during the first half of this football game, Texas A&M controlled the clock. You guys were down by 10. How did you find the rhythm on your offense? Uh, we just kept going. At the end of the day, you know, we had guys like him making plays. But, uh, you know, the coaching staff, we just adjusted. You know, we just kept going. Uh, we got in the rhythm, and we just went from there. On senior day, what has it meant to play in this uniform with this group of guys? Uh, it's, meant, it's meant the world. It's meant a lot for me. Uh, you know, honestly, just coming here, uh, not knowing what I was going to get myself into. Now, uh, you know, my last game in the Death Valley, you know, it means a lot, a lot of mixed emotions, but I'm happy to go out with this group of guys. You've got your name in the Heisman conversation. You'll sit around and see how the votes turn out, whether or not you get an invite to New York. What does it mean and what will it mean if you get to go to New York and your name talked about as one of the best players in college football? Yeah, I mean, it'll mean a lot. You know, growing up watching college football for all those years, for uh, 22 years of my life, uh, you know, go, wanted to be like those guys. You got the you know, RG3, Cam News, Lamar Jackson, seeing those guys win the Heisman. Uh, you know, hopefully I could be next. Appreciate the time. Congratulations. Thank you. He's smart. He knows who's in the booth. <laughs> with Lewis Riddick and Mark Jones.